Hey there, Wargamers, and welcome back to another War Games Delivered video. Be sure to visit us at wargamesdelivered.com to get the paints, miniatures, and supplies used in this video, and also to refer a friend. You guys will both get a $15 discount, and with that, let's get into the video. In this video, we'll be painting a Mormont Bruiser from the A Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. These guys are a hard-hitting but lightly armored anti-infantry unit that are great at flanking your opponent's ranks. To start out, we're using Fire Drake to fill in all of the padded leather on his uniform. We'll be using a lot of brown on this model, so I started with the lightest one first. And with this model, I based him with a slight gray to white Zenithal highlight. I've used this on most of my Stark units for this game so far, so I wanted to keep everything in the same style of painting for this army. And of course, with this style of speed painting, if you need to fix any mistakes, just be sure to have some acrylic matte white handy to patch up any imperfections before switching back with the uh, speed paint you need. And here we're using ruddy fur, and this will dry slightly darker than the fire drake. So we'll use this on the pants, boots, and the sleeves of the model. If you feel that the colors are a bit too similar, feel free to add another layer, or uh, use a one-to-one -one ratio of this with the speed paint medium for a lighter color. These guys are mainly armored in leather, and they actually get stronger the more wounds they take. So having similar kinds of leather for different pieces of clothing, for different models uh, makes a lot of sense for these guys. Now we'll move on to the fur on his cloak using Satchel Brown. This is the darkest brown option out of the Speed Paint 2.0 Mega Set. I really like it quite a bit so far for fur, dark leather, and even wood areas. With heavily textured areas like this, this is really uh, where the speed paints shine. Just be sure to work the paint into all of the recesses so it dries evenly across the cloak with a uh, sort of smaller, more controlled brush here uh, that can be kind of trickier. Um, just make sure you look at it from all angles and really make sure that you've hit every area of the cloak. Moving on, we'll switch over to Absolution Green to paint the tabard of the model. This is one of the classic speed paints that I still really like. They are remaking all of the classic speed paint colors with the new 2.0 formula, so I'm really excited to see how the remixed version of the old speed paints hold up. And to avoid any reactivation with this step, I always give it about 24 hours before varnishing the mini. Next up, we'll be blocking in the detail of his head and facial hair with Warrior Skin and Grim Black respectively. I'm using a more precise detail brush here with the Grim Black because it could stain the face very easily. This will take a little bit longer, but I think the extra control is a worthwhile trade-off. For anyone interested, uh, we do have a unique promotion for all of the Army Painter paint lines over on our website at wargamesdelivered.com, where if you buy uh, six paints, you'll get three for free of your choice with your order. Um, link in the description uh, for this promotion below. Blocking in the face with warrior skin here, I really like this for a more uh, tan flesh tone compared to crusader skin and peachy flesh. Army Painter has really hit the mark with the new flesh tones, I use them very regularly with my day to day painting. Now we'll move on to painting our metallic details, starting out with broadsword silver. And this is one of the new speed paint metallics. I think it works really well as a quick solution for metallic base coats. The paint gives you a great foundation to build upon. With those metallic areas blocked in, now we'll move on to darkening all of those areas down with uh, Dark Tone. This is a great black wash. This is my go-to for all of my silver metallics. And with smaller areas like this, you can give them about 15 to 20 minutes to dry. Just make sure it is fully dry before you go ahead and move on to this step here, which would be uh, using plate mail metal as a quick dry brush over all of those metallic areas to add some highlights back. And lastly, for our final step here, we're going to switch over to bright gold. 
uh, also from the metallic line to fill in all of the buckles on his belt and of course the hoop in his earring here as well. With these A Song of Ice and Fire miniatures, I'm always looking for uh, ways to paint them quickly while still pulling off a decent paint job since there are so many minis per squad. There's uh, always 12 per infantry unit and uh, 4 for cavalry units, so there's a lot of repetition um, and it's always important to find good ways to mix that up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more uh, painting tutorials. And also be sure to check out the top link in the description for the giveaway attached to this video. Thanks again, guys, and happy wargaming.